And if we have a country to save, we need to look at the three warning signs that are facing us. The warning signs are that you can't be going down a, this national cliff when it comes to our fiscal situation and have our dollar weakening by the day and just forget that it's our money they're spending. And Donald Trump is showing no signs of wanting to do anything to correct it. And you can't go down this route of isolationism where all you're doing is pushing us further into war. You're not pulling us back from war. And you can't have a candidate who's going to win a primary who can't win a general. You look at those first early states. They can say Donald Trump won. I give him that. But he, as a Republican incumbent, didn't get 40% of the vote of the primary. And so the issue at hand is, he's not going to get the 40% if he's going and calling out my supporters and saying they're barred permanently from MAGA. He's not going to get the 40% by calling them names. He's not going to get the 40% by trying to take over the RNC so that it pays all his legal fees. He's not going to get the 40% if he is not willing to change and do something that acknowledges the 40%. And why should the 40% have to cave to him? We're talking about the heart and soul of our country, truly. And look, I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing it for a political career. I'm doing this for my kids and all of your kids and grandkids. Think about what they've been through. They've gone through COVID, which was devastating. They're looking at this debt that Trump and Biden have just built up and they're wondering what it means to them. They're wondering if they're ever going to be able to get a job or own a home. They're wondering how they're going to make ends meet. And they're fearful of war breaking out. They deserve to know what normal feels like. You know, I talked about the successes that we had when I was governor in South Carolina. But I'll also remind you that we had a lot of challenges and crises. We had multiple hurricanes. We had a thousand year flood. We had a school shooting. We had the shooting of Walter Scott by a dirty cop. And we had the loss of nine amazing souls by a white nationalist at Mother Emanuel Church. Any one of those could have brought South Carolina to her knees. Those were on the heels, the Walter Scott shooting and the Mother Emanuel shooting were on the heels of Ferguson. And when you turned on the news, there were cities on fire all over our country. But South Carolina didn't burn. We didn't have riots. We had vigils. We didn't have protests. We had prayer. The tone at the top matters.